You know, serial entrepreneurship, it's like being a serial killer, except you're killing yourself constantly. We raised a little over $20 million. We have offices across the country. I helped write the last season of Silicon Valley on HBO. How much do you invest per company? One to three million euros. Whatever you're thinking, add two zeros to it. This is the third startup that I'm doing. I live in New York, I'm from Chicago, and I'm an art consultant. And so far we have been working across 30 plus countries in Asia, Africa, and Europe, and we have benefited over 1.1 million people. If an entrepreneur is trying to pitch you, what's the number one thing that they have to say to you to make you invest? How do you get into YC? Concise advice for someone who wants to start a company. I'm at the Forbes 30 Under 30 Summit interviewing entrepreneurs and investors from all over the world who are sharing their advice on how to start a successful business and make their dreams a reality. This video is jam-packed with golden nuggets, so make sure you watch it all the way through, save this link, send it to a friend who's starting a company, and let's go. We're gonna go and talk to some Forbes 30 Under 30 listers. Are you on the Forbes list? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to do a quick interview? Sure. All right, let's do it. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm from New York City, and I work on PathSpot, which detects for invisible contamination on your hands. We raised a little over $20 million. Um, we have offices across the country. So we've known each other for a while. So give me like the rundown. When did we start this? How did it evolve? Been working on it since 2017, and it's evolved a ton, especially as the world has really started focusing on how to stop the transmission of disease and illness. We have uh, people scanning hands in all over the world. Advice for entrepreneurs or people thinking about starting a business? Just go do it. There's never going to be the right time, but start talking about it. Tell as many people about your idea as you can, and, and that's what gets it started. I am the co-founder and uh, CEO of a company called Chloe. Uh, it's my second company. I uh, started about six months ago. We're building a home equity-backed credit card. Prior to that, I was uh, operating a a real estate ad tech SaaS platform and I just I don't know I think I love the grind uh, the the building uh, of building a new company is, is fun it's all about the journey at the grand in the grand scheme of things and so it's it's hard it's tough you have to you have to do something that you're passionate about because this is a long game and if you kind of get burnt out so quickly because it's just not fun it's not meaningful to you then you know, it won't succeed. I remember the first time telling you about the idea and how much it's changed since then. It, it, you know, you can't start without starting. And look at you now. Here we are. My name's Greg. I'm from Los Angeles and I run a film tech company. We're like an assistant director's toolbox. It's extremely stressful, but, uh, but it's going really well. We work a lot with some of the biggest studios in the world. We just went through Y Combinator. Tell me about Y Combinator. Someone who wants, a lot of people who watch this, they're entrepreneurs aspiring. They want to get into YC. You basically have to have a concept that's been vetted by customers. Basically, you have to go to customers, figure out what they want, build something, and then make sure that they like it, and then iterate. If your team is already in the you know, space of that customer, it's easier. YC really likes engineers. So if you have a bunch of engineers who have some sort of specific insight and have already iterated a couple times, it works. Are you an engineer? Yeah. Hi, I'm Julia Shohaida. I'm from Hungary, Budapest. I'm on the finance list of Europe and I have a venture capital firm called Vespucci Partners. We're investing in deep tech. We're connecting the Central Eastern European region to the US startup ecosystem. How much do you invest per company? Per company, one to three million euros. If an entrepreneur is trying to pitch you, what's the number one thing that they have to say to you to make you invest? They really have to stand out, their personality. I have to see that they're actually a go-getter and they're going to reach, the, reach their results. I'm Evan Zimmerman, founder of Javono, a venture capital firm, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. We invest in people who are solving hard problems and building delightful products in industries that really need some kind of change. I mean, just in the last few years, we've deployed over $15 million. We cut checks anything from really small 10,000 for people who are just starting out to leading Series A's and cutting multiple multi-million dollar checks. We're really interested in is people who have a really clear sense of what they're doing and why. So we think about people who are solving a really hard technical problem or they're working on a really hard market where we really want to see, hey, you understand the market, you understand what makes it different, you understand how you actually make money in that industry. Concise advice for someone who wants to start a company. For one, find, find a team that uh, has complementary skill sets that you actually enjoy working with and then also just find something that you're passionate about solving because if you're not pa really like meaningfully passionate about something it's gonna be very hard to go through all the kind of you know tough times about you know uh, building it in general you know serial entrepreneurship it's like being a serial killer except you're killing yourself constantly I started another startup before this one I helped write the last season of Silicon Valley on HBO and that's actually how I met my co-founders to start this business. That's so cool. Yeah, it's been crazy. <laughs> it's been insane. Advice for just someone who wants to start a business. 
really talk to so many customers because I've realized that I'm a really weird person and I don't, like all the ideas that I have are for helping me, but everybody else has other needs and wants. So just talk to so many people. So someone who's looking to raise money from the VC, what, what do they need to tell you where you believe that I'm gonna invest? Yeah, it's really about people more than anything else. Are you incredible? Is your team incredible? I think a really big thing for right now especially is milestones and proof points. So thinking about, hey, okay, here's for the next year or two years, depending on what stage you're at and what you're trying to do. Here's sort of the things I'm gonna try to do. And here's how I'm gonna prove that I actually did what I said I was going to do at each point. Thinking a lot about those two things, milestones and proof points. Those should be the two phrases as a founder that are constantly in your head right now. My name is Rachel Kolscher. I live in New York. I'm from Chicago and I'm an art consultant. I technically call myself an art advisor, but a lot of people don't know what that means. An art consultant means I help collections in sort of any stage of what they might be, develop them, fill them out, make sure they're representative of different genders, different ethnicities, and I also advise for various museums. For an entrepreneur out there, what is your advice for them? Oh my God, stick with your dream, believe in yourself. From Kolkata in India, and I'm a social impact entrepreneur, hence on the Asia 2022 social impact list at Forbes. It's a technology platform where we implement blockchain technology to offer loans to farmers. This is the third startup that I'm doing, so uh, it has been a learning you know, path and, and quite a quite a steep curve. So experience is, is what has helped me build it as well. So I think at least try uh, from an early age, that's something I was able to do and, and that should get you somewhere. My name is Ishmael, I was born in Sudan, but I live in Los Angeles. I am the co-founder and CTO at Paragon. Uh, we're an embedded integration platform. How much money total have you raised? Uh, just south of 17 million. What are you gonna do with all that money? Primarily uh, marketing uh, and then uh, also headcount. So before Series A, we were about uh, maybe 14, 15 people. We're maybe 30, 31 right now and we're probably going to scale to about 40 to 45. We're going to do that over the next few months. Uh, then we're going to be targeting raising our Series B late next year. For someone who's raising money for their business, what advice do you have to close the deal? I think it really depends on what stage you're at. Um, if you're seed, um, you have to really sell like the, the vision, the potential, like the, the upside of the business. Um, I think too many people focus on like the beachhead and don't think about how the business is going to expand. Hi, my name is Shomi Hassan Chaudhary and I'm from Bangladesh. I'm the co-founder of a global nonprofit called Awareness360. I'm a social impact entrepreneur. It's a global youth leadership platform where we are providing youths with um, different skills and tools and resources to advance so that they can work on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And so far we have been working across 30 plus countries in Asia, Africa and Europe and we have benefited over 1.1 million people. I think for aspiring entrepreneurs my biggest um, advice would be to really start. Uh, it might be small but just start and keep going and uh, really find your passion in what, what bothers you. Additionally, I think a lot of people will focus too small. Um, they'll uh, look at markets that are, say, like millions of dollars or like hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, VCs, they uh, need to make their money back by their uh, investments, essentially like IPOing or <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, returning some insane multiple. Whatever you're thinking, add two zeros to it. Uh, and that's how big it should be. And three zeros. <laughs> three zeros. It's the whole crew, y'all work together? Oh, yeah, it's the whole crew. Can we fit them all in the frame? Man, I just turned 21. Just do it, make it happen. You know, don't follow the rule book. You know what I'm saying? You gotta just do it. That work in, non-stop, non-stop. So, yeah, tell us about you, man. You're doing interviews on us. What about you? Can Forbes I interview 30 under you? Three, yeah, man, here, give me okay. it. You got 30 seconds. Yo, what's Go going on? It. I'm Be Free. We here at the Forbes 30 under 30. And I'm here with my special guest. Ferris Sabetti, CEO of My Swim Pro. What's up? What's going on, man? How you doing today? So, uh, what brings you out to the Forbes 30 Under 30 Summit? Love networking with other entrepreneurs, sharing my story, connecting with others, and sharing your stories with the world. That is amazing. Tell me about what you've been up to. Yeah, so we help people get better at swimming. So I've been doing a lot of swimming. We've been scaling out the team, improving our app. We've been syncing with new wearables. We're just trying to get people moving in the pool. Well, you're one of the entrepreneurs I've looked up to most since our very first days of starting, and you. You've always been a mentor for me, so tell me what advice would you give me and all the other entrepreneurs out there? Trust your gut. Take action. You probably know what you're doing. You just got to believe and dig deep and just follow your instinct. Hi, my name's Julian Gluck. I'm a B-52H instructor pilot, an Air Force major, and I'm presently serving at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. Very excited to be here and to talk with folks from all sorts of diverse backgrounds and hear about their passions and what they do. Uh, I'm involved in conventional and nuclear bomber pilot flying, as well as uh, the nonprofit space where I run a couple of national nonprofits in my free time. Super, so in the entrepreneurial world, what advice do you have for someone looking to start a company? 
I would definitely uh, urge you to consider opportunities in the defense sector and innovation. There's a lot of wonderful places where you can talk to companies and help our national security enterprise and those of our allies. My name is Sari Diskin. I'm a local lifestyle influencer. I share a lot of food. I share a lot of mom talk. I talk a lot about mental health and how to have a healthy relationship with food. I love what I do. Tell me about the influencer lifestyle. What does that really mean? When people hear influencer, they don't know what that means. What does that mean? Well, I've actually been in the influencer space since 2017. I started off as a hardcore food blogger and then I transitioned to lifestyle when I was living in Chicago. Then my husband and I moved back here and I had a baby, so I kind of evolved my content. And day to day, that's sharing my life, really talking about what's authentic to me and finding real ways to connect with my audience. And then advice for other people who are trying to get into the influencer space or entrepreneurs, anything like that. You have to stay in your own lane. Comparing yourself to other people is so easy in the digital world. Just hone what you have, hone your passions, and just share. Like, you got nothing to lose. It's fun. Breadless is a new restaurant here in Detroit. We opened six months ago, and it's all about gluten-free options. So our whole menu is 100% gluten-free. Or all about delicious sandwiches made with leafy super greens instead of bread or iceberg lettuce. So we'll use Swiss chard, turnip greens, collard greens, and kale as the foundation of our sandwiches with all the flavor, with all the greens. If someone's thinking about starting a restaurant, starting a business, what advice do you have? Be scrappy, network, come to events like Forbes 30 Under 30, and just see how you can meet different people who have been in the industry or doing something similar to you are. There's a wealth of knowledge that you can always learn from others. Hi, I'm Valentina, and I have a jewelry business. Luxury, handmade jewelry, I get a lot of inspiration from my culture. I'm Albanian American, so everything. I'm a walk -like advertisement. That's like the key it. to being an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite? What you wear now? Um, maybe these pieces because okay. they're inspired by my heritage and they're really oh, popular. I so I love making that trendy for people to wear. Someone who's thinking about launching a business, yeah. jewelry or otherwise, what what advice do you have? Just do it. You're gonna figure it out along the way. You can never prepare enough, so you got to rip the band-aid and then go with it if you're really passionate about it and keep on working. There's always challenges, but I've always considered them just like learning opportunities. So maybe just like growing, continuing to be creative, always trying to stay ahead, seeing what customers like, don't like, and just trying to stay on top of that creativity and making making your customers happy. My name is Herwig. I'm originally from Belgium, but we are both from Miami, and we are the founders of Security Token Group. We track and tokenize stocks, assets, debt, bonds, all on the blockchain. We are the go-to resource. Explain it like I'm five language. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Crypto is really cool because you can send things around the world really cheaply, really cost effectively. But the problem is that it's kind of monopoly money in a lot of ways, right? It's really volatile. It's not backed by anything. So what we try to do is bring real assets, equities, real estate, ownership in stocks, anything that's real, and also translate it using the same technology. We just closed on our Series A of $3 million, raised over $4 million to date. We've got an incredible team of about 30 different people back in Miami, across media, production, technology, consulting, and much more. So for someone who wants to start a company, but they haven't done anything yet, what should they do? Execution. It's all about execution. You can have a great idea, but you got to help bring that, put that pedal to the metal, make something happen, bring a lot of great people together with you, and see what happens. And don't give up. Persistence is everything. That's the combination, execution and persistence. 30 second interview. You know you want this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right. We, we recording? We recording? Eric Thomas, Chief Storyteller for the City of Detroit. I am from the City of Detroit. Just want people to know that Detroit is about the people. The most incredible asset we have here is the people, and they're the most interesting parts of the city. What advice do you have for an aspiring entrepreneur? <laughs> it's way harder than you might expect. You only do it if you're pretty insane. Um, but if you're willing to stick it out, there's a lot of return on investment. Even if it's not just being in business, sometimes it can be a stair step for your career opportunity even if you don't stay in business. And I don't think people talk about that enough. In addition to being scrappy, I would say it's all about building your tribe, right? At the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know. So it's about co coming together with other like-minded people who can support you in areas that you may not be as experienced. My name is Adnan. I'm from Jerusalem and I'm founder of Yalla Riyadha, online fitness personal training platform in Arabic. The launch of Yalla Riyadha just a month ago, and it's the first ever online fitness training platform, marketplace of trainers, and uh, an application to build training programs and attract people. Bi Arabi. Bil Arabi. And for someone who's thinking about launching a company, what advice do you have to those future entrepreneurs? Talk with the customer, know what exactly he's willing to buy then start building. My name is Sana Mersinki. I'm from Orlando, Florida and I founded a nonprofit called Campaign Home. It's a 501c3 and we help foster communities and children in the state of Florida. What advice do you have for an aspiring entrepreneur? 
I would say do it early and do it as soon as you can. What I mean by that is I've been wanting to launch my own nonprofit forever and I gave myself 100 days to launch it. So I launched my nonprofit in 100 days and I held myself accountable and I shared my journey online and I had every single day had to post a story on what I worked on and how I did it and who I talked to and all that information so there was an accountability on every everywhere so I would say be accountable for yourself and let other people hold you accountable so do it you can do it Matt and I'm from Poland Juliana and I'm from Brazil yeah, and we've co-founded Auda. It's the first marketplace for daily content for social media. A lot of people out there trying to raise money. Yes. Any advice you have? How's it going? Give me the give me the scoop. You know, it's all about networking, and that's why we are here as well. Like, you can meet amazing people while while in at Forbes event, and I think that's going to help us a lot with like fundraising, getting warm introductions. So you guys have already launched. So what advice do you have for someone who is yet to launch? They haven't started anything, but they want to start a company. What advice? I think it's to show proof of concept. So basically, showing that there is a market demand. For for what you're building. Whether you're an entrepreneur or not, just hearing these stories is inspiring. Let me know in the comments what business owner inspired you the most. And while you're down there, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're inspired by these Forbes 30 under 30 listers, you'll want to check out a video I made on how to actually make the Forbes 30 under 30 list. But hey, that's our time. We here at uh, 30 under 30 Summit with Forbes. Uh, we about to have a phenomenal time. So uh, if you're watching this, like and subscribe, smash that subscribe button. Smash Smash Destroy that like button. the like button. Destroy it. Throw it on the ground like I'm about to do this mic. Nah. I'm <laughs> do you guys have a restroom by any chance? Restroom. I don't work here. I don't know, man. 